A warm welcome to everybody out there. Um, welcome to our next webinar here at JFD Brokers and welcome in the name of JFD Brokers as well. It's always a pleasure to have so many people around there uh, listening to those kind of webinars. And um, yeah, today it's uh, time for action. No, <laughs> um, that's a little bit of the title of uh, today's webinar. It's uh, Price Action Strategies. So the title is already tell, telling you a little bit of, of um, the basic nature of that strategy. We want to have action within the price. And that is what we want to try to catch during um, those movements. And uh, we want to take part of those movements and uh, finally to uh, get out of them profitable trades into our account. Um, I have to mention the date. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, 23rd of November 2017, 7 p.m. And my name Stefan, Stefan Friedrichowski, as always, for, for those kind of webinars. You see already my contact here, my email address. Later, um, we will run through a couple of Excel sheets. And if you want to uh, have those um, Excel sheets, no problem. Just send me an email exactly to that address here, S. Friedrichowski. I know it's a real complicated last name at jfdbrokers.com. Um, and I will make sure that you get all those Excel sheets, uh, which I will present uh, later during uh, this webinar. The slides of today are already uploaded, so you can download them directly via the go to webinar uh, control panel. And um, what uh, there's one question already um, is uh, are those uh, webinars recorded? The answer is yes, of course. And you will find those webinars later. Uh, later means always uh, tomorrow. Um, exactly here. So um, if you look for the YouTube channel of JFD, just press uh, at Google um, JFD Brokers YouTube, then you will be automatically directed here to this kind of um, web page and you will find the recordings of this webinar as well as all the older ones uh, here. And if you want to go further in detail, uh, there's a button, um, for me it's now here in German, but uh, show more, uh, I think it's um, written in English there. And then you get all the older webinars as well, uh, always German, English, um, whatever you like. So you can have access to the recordings as well. Uh, so absolutely no problem. But um, before we start, yeah, two things. <laughs> the one I always uh, show at the very beginning, uh, that is uh, the risk disclaimer because we talk about trading strategies. Um, therefore, I have to mention that finally, if you trade, you trade always on your own. Um, I think it's self-explaining, but anyhow, I have to mention it uh, every time. Um, and the other thing, yeah, last week, last weekend, we have had uh, the WOT, uh, that's a trade fair world of trading in Frankfurt. And it was really a great event. And I just want to share with you uh, three pictures um, from that world of trading. Uh, so you can see here a little bit of the uh, boost of uh, JFD Brokers. Um, and you see me telling something about uh, the FDAX Seasonal. You might remember that is a webinar we have maybe four months, five months ago, um, how to trade uh, the daily seasonal of uh, the DAX. And uh, you see me uh, here in front of... Uh, the monitor. Um, it was really a great show there. And uh, two other pictures here um, that, uh, how can I get them? Um, there's, uh, I have made one seminar and the webinar was about um, human and machine, who is a better trader. And uh, that will be a topic of um, next month. So I will do the same talk here in English uh, done already here on that uh, trade fair but uh, yeah who is a better trader the human or 
as a machine? And uh, I think that's an interesting question. Uh, you may think already about that. Uh, and uh, I want to share with you my, my thinking about uh, that topic. Um, and that was uh, a talk here as well. And uh, one last picture, uh, just that you see a little bit of how that um, trade fair went on. Um, yeah, later they, they offered uh, some beer, but uh, there have still been some people around still um, being interested in uh, what I have to share or want to share. And you see how I did it. Uh, so you see here the beer uh, already empty, my computer on top of that. So it was really a nice atmosphere to, to have <laughs> that kind of uh, more or less private discussion with uh, sweet traders, which are always part here of of those kind of webinars in the German part as well. So it was really a nice show there. Um, so story went on all the time here uh, until late evening. So, but now back to our price action. So what's about? Um, of course, when we talk about price action strategies, um, we have to think about how to define it. Uh, we need a definition for price action. You may think, okay, that's easy, um, but we want to place orders. So we need a, a little bit more of that kind of definition in order to really say how we want to place our orders. And uh, besides the pure definition, and there are maybe several uh, price action strategies around. Uh, therefore, I do my own uh, definition here uh, so that we have a common language in order to describe that kind of strategy. Uh, I will visualize exactly that kind of uh, order placement in MT4 um, so that everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about. Before we then start to optimize that kind of strategy. You will see um, the strategy has three degrees of freedom. And uh, I will want to share with you um, how I do it in Excel on a D1 base. Um, you can go down the road with that kind of strategy to taller timeframes as well. And uh, the Excel sheets are already prepared for doing uh, that as well. Uh, I don't do it here today simply because um, uh, the Excel sheet, yeah, they, they get a little bit slow. And um, therefore, I decided to, to show everything on D1. But it's really one of those kind of strategies. And that's not always um, right that you can go down the road to smaller time frames. Um, but in this case, I can tell you it, it's working for, top, for smaller time frames as well. The, I have already to mention here that we will have some restrictions or limitations uh, within Excel um, to, to really develop that kind of strategy, but uh, we can move around a little bit, um, but at, as long as we know those limitations, uh, then it's okay. Uh, otherwise, um, you you might have uh, some some mistakes, or you will think, "Hey, there, that's not correct. What we are doing here." And I will show profitable examples for uh, three or two two forex pairs. Then I go for ducks and gold as well. And I have an invitation for some homework. So um, you 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 uh, hear me already a little bit uh, smiling, but um, yeah. Uh, so it's just an invitation, nothing else. So how do we define price action? Um, before we start, uh, just an example already here in MT4. And uh, I want to focus uh, you on exactly this, this chart here, this uh, part. Um, in this case, it's Euro Canadian dollar uh, on an M15 time. And you, you see, there's one big candle. Uh, this one here, or at least a bigger candle than all the other ones. And here we have exactly such an action. And what we want to do with that kind of price action strategy, we want to take profit exactly out of those kind of movements. That move is exactly what we want to try to catch with our trading strategy and uh, just have this example on a smaller time frame here we will go on with um, higher time frames later but that is exactly what we try to catch 
And you might remember that we have had already one strategy dealing uh, with big movements, and that was the power candle strategy. But that power candle strategy reacts after a big move. So you might remember we realized that whenever we have such huge candles, so-called power candles, then we uh, derived some typical movement after the occurrence of such a big candle. But that is after the price action strategy, strategy now should already gain from exactly those moves. So we want to place our orders in such a way that we profit from those big moves. We don't know when in time they will occur, but because of our uh, placed orders, we are prepared to, to um, get that action into our account. So in principle, it's a little bit similar to the, to the open range breakout strategies. So we place two orders, one buy stop, one sell stop. And we place those orders on the base of the open of a candle. Later we will do it on a D1, then everything becomes uh, maybe a little bit more uh, obvious. So we place an order, so we look for the open of a candle, D1, H1, whatever, and within a certain distance, and um, I put the word wording distance here uh, in brackets, but it means in a certain distance we place a buy stop, and a sell stop order, and we we think about uh, OCO orders uh, in this case. But in principle, the, the the base logic is to have in a certain distance two orders. And now, if that movement comes, one of those will be triggered, and hopefully, that's the the, the uh, basic understanding here or the assumption that the move will go further. So not only just hitting our our uh, stop order and then going back, no, going um, triggering the buy stop or the sell stop order and then move on, like in the example we have had in the uh, Euro Canadian dollar uh, example M15. We need a certain distance for that order placement and. A good thing to, to use here is that we use the ATR, the average true range, which is a measure more or less of the volatility of the market. And we simply use a multiple of that ATR in order to place the two orders, the buy stop and the sell stop order. Think about a chart, you have an ATR and, and you say, okay, in a distance of one times ATR, I place those two orders. The good thing is of using the ATR is that you always have the overall volatility within your strategy. So if the overall volatility goes up, then those distances uh, distances in, in absolute numbers, um, in BIPs, for example, would increase. And if there's n not that uh, high volatility, the distance becomes smaller in um, values like BIPs. The so stop loss and take profit we want to place here, we use, again, multiples of that ATR. So especially for the stop loss, we use a multiple of the ATR as well. And then we can use a standard formula like risk reward ratio um, in order to get our trade, take profit for, for those trades. So in principle, that kind of strategy has three degrees of freedom. As you know, that I, when I talk about strategies, I always talk about those degrees of freedoms, or you might call them simply parameters like, yeah, what is a multiple for the order placement? What is a multiple for the stop loss setting? And what kind or what is a multiple, the risk reward ratio for setting the take profit? So those are three parameters and um, mathematically they are simply called degrees of freedom. In principle, you might think about a force 
a degree of freedom or parameter here as well. And that is how to define the ATR. So we need a, an ATR period. Um, but in this case, I you simply use fixed periods for uh, specific time frames. Um, when I go here for D1, it will be an ATR of 22, which represents exactly one month. Um, so if I would go down, for example, to H1 uh, candles, I would at least go for um, for um, 24 uh, in order to, to cover um, one day. But anyhow, that's um, I use a fixed number because I only want to use the ATR as the overall measure of volatility, but I don't want to use the ATR period as an optimization parameter within that kind of strategy. In practice, it would look like the following. Let's open a new chart that we have uh, one fresh chart or without uh, uh, that much additional stuff here. So we go for um, Euro, US dollar, for example, here in this case, or that we have uh, ongoing trades here. Um, does not mean anything. So let's go for D1 and zoom here a little bit. And what we need else is we need an ATR in order to illustrate what I want to do here with order placement. I always use a fixed minimum um, because then the ATR is more is telling me a little bit more. You will see in a minute what I mean. And uh, I go for an ATR period of 22, uh, just representing one month. And now I can put this here a little bit further. So now we, I think we have everything what we want to, to have here. Um, you see immediately why I use that uh, zero uh, for the ATR value um, because uh, I don't want to think, oh, what a low volatility do we have? Indeed, we have a low uh, volatility right now, but uh, uh, sometimes uh, if you don't use the fixed minimum, then it looks like uh, you you so the volatility volatility goes to zero, but that's not the case. And you see a couple of big candles here. One example, one example, noch, uh, the next example, and so on. And those big candles, there we want to try to to, um, to catch a little bit out of them uh, into profits into our account. Let me zoom a little bit further here. And um, that I go, for example, for this huge candle in order to illustrate what I mean with order placement in units of ATR. Let me first, we, we go for this candle and this candle has, a, has an open and the open is exactly here. So let's uh, put a horizontal line uh, here and uh, maybe let's go for, for blue uh, for that uh, horizontal line. So that's the open at that day, the open of this candle. We know that value. Uh, in principle, it would be at midnight, but uh, since I mentioned already, you can go for other time frames, or you can still place those orders later because normally in the first couple of hours, um, there will not be um, huge movements uh, during the first maybe six or eight um, uh, six or eight um, hours. So here's the open, and uh, oh, let me um, go delete this. Okay, now it's uh, getting quiet here. Um, so here we are. So that's the open, and now we can look for the ATR. The ATR we can measure the volatility, and the volatility here is about um, 0.006, just as an example. That's the number um, we, we can get here. And now placing those two orders might mean, okay, we go for one order maybe here. Let me change um, um, the, the color as well. So let's go for uh, red. Okay, 
now we have one here and that distance in this case would be about half 0.5 ATR just as an example so that would be the buy stop order and the sell stop order would be exactly on the other side so uh, uh, around here and we have that open and at that point in time we would place the two orders buy stop here on the red line and the other sell stop on the other red line later the day the buy stop order would have been triggered so we are long in the market and now it depends where do we set the stop loss of that order where's our take profit and then you will um, whatever in this case uh, more or less for sure um, we would have a great trade uh, think about uh, we would use as as uh, stop loss multiplier the same like the order placement half atr for the stop loss then our stop loss of that buy stop order would have been exactly that blue line and um, even with an risk reward ratio of three um, we would be take profit uh, around here so of course great example exactly uh, what i want to to show here uh, you know that uh, always when somebody is presenting a strategy everything works um, firsthand uh, immediately profit trade of course but uh, we don't we, we will not have every trade as a winner trade as for every strategy um, but in this case you see exactly what i mean so our price action strategy means that we on the base of the open of a candle and now i say candle because um you might go down uh, the time frames to h4 h1 or whatever so on the base of the open which is exactly here the blue line we place our two orders if one is hit then the other one is cancelled and in this case it works perfect so um and you think about other examples um maybe here the other big candle within that chart the red one here so the blue line would have been in this case here and our two red lines would have been one about here and the other one about here this one would be triggered perfect trade um, so we try to catch the huge movements whenever they come and this whenever they come we we get by our distance order by setting those orders in a certain distance from the open of a candle so that's the complete logic i hope it is well understood now and uh, just as a reminder i put into the slides uh, here uh, this um, picture you see it's exactly the same example um, we have discussed uh, within mt4 um, that you still have um, yeah, as a short reminder uh, how it should work in principle if you download those slides then this is a perfect um, illustration of such a trait so now we want to to get that kind of strategy into an excel sheet in order to check whether it really works and um, since we have had already one other strategy which is a little bit similar and that is the open range breakout strategy i started with exactly that kind of excel sheet uh, and then i made some changes uh, to that excel sheet in order to get the price action strategy out of the same excel sheet which is always wonderful by just changing a little bit around then uh, we come from one strategy to the other one and the excel sheets i will show later here um, you can have those just by sending me an email uh, you know the email address and later i will show once again okay 
But I have to to um, remind you that we have some limitations within Excel. That is more a technical limitation, just in order to calculate our trades. And um, the limitation is here that within one row, we can only really have one action. And that action would be first that our order is triggered, that our buy stop, for example, is active. If that's the case, and within a D1 candle, we can later not distinguish about any stop loss and take profits. That's simply impossible. Uh, especially, uh, we don't know whether first stop loss is hit and later take profit or other way around. That's simply impossible if you look to the four numbers of a single candle. So it's a limitation you always have when you deal with those kind of strategies. So the solution for that is simply go down um, the time frame um, because then you can distinguish what event happens first. But here we cannot distinguish between those. Formally, that means that if I present later the, that Excel sheet, within the first candle, which is always a trigger candle of our order, formally we don't have a stop loss and no, uh, and, uh, no take profit. We simply wait for the second candle and then we decide how it goes on. As always, we have that worst case principle. That means <clears throat> if you don't know within the second candle which event, stop loss or take profit, happens first, we always think about stop loss. So we have some worst case principle within the kind of strategy, which is good. Uh, because um, in the real life, um, it can only be better. But in this case, for the first candle, formally, we don't have a take profit and no stop loss. I just have to remind you about that. There's another limitation that uh, if we go to, for very small distances between the open and the two orders, um, then in principle, it might be that both are within the Excel sheet are hit. Uh, and once again, we don't know which one happens first. And in this case, I decided for the long trade. But uh, anyhow, I will show you some how it works and that we still get uh, quite good results out of that. So. I talk a lot, a lot about uh, the introduction. Let's go into action. That means let's have a look how that Excel sheet works. You, you know, always it's a lot of numbers, but let me guide you quickly through uh, what we are doing here before we come to exactly those kind of equities. Uh, just an example here. Uh, for an uh, equity of the price action strategy. Underlying here is Euro uh, Japanese Yen on a D1 base. And the unit for our equity is just R, the risk unit R and nothing else. So um, maybe you don't know what R means. It's simply the distance between the open of our trade and our stop loss setting is always one R. And if you want to multiply, if you want to have euros or US dollars within your equity, you have simply to multiply those numbers like 100 with the amount of money you are uh, willing to risk. So then you get the, all the results in euro. It's exactly like what you're doing when you place a wheel trade. Um, you know, I want to risk, for example, 50 euros. I know the distance in bips of my stop loss, and then you calculate the lot size of your trade. And in this case, I simply do everything directly in R, um, not calculating any lot sizes, but for the real trading activity, of course you can do it. So that's how those um, equity lines are, are generated. But how are they generated? So 
I start with something we learned already in our DAX Vola, uh, volatility seminar, uh, webinar um, to calculate the ATR. And this starts always with um, the true range um, of um, the, the candles. Then we do here everything in percent. And finally, we, we do the, the averaging um, now not for the first candles because uh, it's not defined, but for example here, just that you see what I do, it's just the average of the last 22 candles. Um, so that means we have that ATR 22. Um, that's one month about uh, for D1 candles, and that's the reason. So we that's the way how we calculate the ATR because we need that. ATR value in order to place our two orders. And those two orders are virtually placed uh, here but just by calculating uh, where they are. So range max means on the base. Let me click it, then you see exactly what I do. I start with the open of a candle. I look for the ATR of the previous candle because I don't know the final ATR value later the day. So therefore I have to look for the previous ATR value. And then the, the buy stop order is simply open plus multiple alt, uh, ATR of um, that uh, candle. And that's the buy stop order. So you see we have 107.7 .7 here and one point above about we have the buy stop order and about one point below. Same formula, just with a minus. We have that sell stop order. Yeah, and that's all. And now we know where those two orders are. And then we ask here, is the order triggered? Yes or no? And that is simply answered with a zero um, and a plus one for the long trade and minus one for the short trade. And then everything else is more or less the same like other Excel sheets before. So we, whenever an order is triggered, uh, like here, then we calculate where do we set the stop loss, where is our Take profit just by uh, this uh, CRV uh, means risk reward ratio or Chance Risiko Verhältnis uh, in, in German. So it's a risk reward ratio. And then we get the two numbers uh, we need stop loss and take profit. And then, same formula like every time um, that we calculate everything in R, we don't forget the spreads. And I use here always higher numbers than you might expect, simply because uh, I want to incorporate commissions as well, but not by the real commission values, just by increasing uh, the values for the spread. Um, that's more or less the same, like um, directly calculating a commission for those trades as well. Yeah, and that's all. And then we can add up our all our trades and we get our equities. And now back to the degrees of freedom. And um, let me zoom out here a little bit. You see that I have marked three numbers in yellow. One is the multiple for the ATR for our entry levels. Then I have a multiple for the ATR for the stop loss setting. And I have a mul the, the risk reward ratio for setting the tick profit. Just for start, the start conditions, I do here something else. And that is simply, you see that the values from um, the order placement and the stop loss are always the same uh, because I have really uh, hard coded uh, that those two numbers uh, equal each other. And um, that makes it a little bit easier just starting that optimization procedure here uh, to get the numbers um, or to find good numbers uh, for uh, this kind of strategy. So, and now let me put here uh, the picture. Uh, here, and now we can change 
the numbers. For example, we, we, we can change the distance for the order placement. And you see, of course, the equity changes. We can go this direction, we can go the other direction, and always what you see here is we get an equity for that kind of strategy, and here we get all the key figures uh, we need. Let me remind you that for the first candle, our trade is without stop loss. That means, especially if we go for smaller values of order placement distance, that, um, let me show it you here directly, that we get a couple of trades like minus 1.12R, 1.37R, and you think, hey, why should I lose more than one R with one trade? Okay, in principle, there might be a gap that would be calculated correctly here as well. But reason here is that within the trigger candle of a trade, we don't have a stop loss. We wait for the next candle and now we ask, hey, is the stop loss um, triggered? Yes or no? And if so, then we get a higher loss. So it's once again that kind of limitation we have within Excel and the only solution is um, fill in smaller time frames uh, then you get rid of uh, that kind of topic here. But anyhow uh, in principle it works. We calculate here um, higher losses in this case and that's the reason why the average loss for example here in my example is already higher than uh, 1R, so minus 1.3 in this case. But nevertheless, we get nice equity lines for this kind of strategy. Um, and um, maybe I go a little bit further up with my uh, multiple for risk reward ratios, my take profit distance. And you see, I always look here for this number of opti, the smaller the better. And if I increase my risk reward ratio a little bit more it's even getting better and um, then finally uh, it's getting worse on the other hand uh, um, once again um, at least finally so you see here i cannot go for too high values here um, but something in between um, gives me good results for that kind of strategy and you see already one another advantage as uh, we have had that kind of topic in other uh, development of strategies as well. That is the uh, how robust is our strategy and that's always looking for the neighborhood. And that's exactly what I'm doing when I uh, press uh, risk reward ratio 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5 and so on. And you see that it's more or less stable of course, the equity is not not um, um, the equity is changing, but it's not dramatically changing uh, into negative, for example. So you see, we get very good results for that kind of strategy, and that's not only um, for Euro Japanese yen. Although I can tell you that that kind of strategy is good for any underlying which has a tendency to, to go in one direction a little bit longer. Um, a good example for the opposite would be Euro Swiss franc. That kind of underlying does not move at all, more or less. Maybe shortly up, then going down, then shortly down, going up again. But you don't have at least medium trends. Pairs with Japanese yen, they have a tendency to, to move in one direction at least a little bit longer or uh, even tax values, because but there we uh, that's a topic we, we discuss later. Even gold is not that bad. So we can use a selection of underlines in order to get uh, good values. And you see already here a quite well a strategy. What you might do is you might use the normal Microsoft Excel 
Um, and this is here the same example as before, Euro, Japanese, Yen. And then you might use what is called the technique of Solver. Solver is an optimization tool within Excel. You have to activate that um, in your base settings of Excel. And if you do something like that and press that, uh, that button, uh, Solver, then you can say, okay, I want to minimize a specific cell by varying other cells, those degrees of freedom under certain um, conditions, um, like um, higher than zero, smaller than three, and so on and so forth. And then you can say, okay, please optimize. And then the computer is doing the rest of uh, that job. It always takes time. So you can you can uh, drink coffee here um, a lot uh, and waiting for those results. But anyhow, the computer is doing its job and is optimizing your strategy. You can even go for varying um, multiple um, cells here, like every, all of those uh, yellow underlined cells, and then uh, the computer is doing the job of optimization. Just that you know uh, you can use that kind of technique as well. I mentioned that I want to show you just uh, a few other examples before we go for a long only strategy as well. Um, here's an example for Euro US dollar. Everything is the same, the same kind of formulas, the same kind of Excel sheet. All you have to do is you have to do um, filling new price histories within the very beginning here. And you see, I have already prepared uh, a time um, or one um, column for times. If you go for intraday um, candles, then you get those um, that, that column filled as well. So you put the new prices in here, and then you can figure around, um, yeah, what kind of of uh, optimization you want to achieve, and what kind of results you finally have by going for those three values: the distance for the order placement as a multiple. Um, ATR for the entry and um, stop loss settings and risk reward ratio. Uh, that's a Euro um, US dollar, and here we have an example for gold as well. Uh, works well. But finally, I want to show you something. I have done the same exercise here uh, for, for ducks. Um, it's already behaving not that bad, but I want to try here something else. Since we know from a long history that an index like DAX or uh, other indices like S&P 500 uh, or Dow Jones, whatever, they have a bias. And of course, they, the bias of uh, indices or even of uh, stock values is simply going north. Um, so they have um, yeah, a preference for uh, increase as always. And what we can you do here is we can try to use that within our strategy as well. Formally, it would mean we don't place a short order. I have done that kind of exercise here within uh, the Excel sheet just with a um, small trick. And that trick is simply and uh, now my, my optimization here is ready. So if I have to press OK, but anyhow, I go back uh, to the DAX. What I did here is you see the numbers uh, where I place my short orders. And you see <laughs> negative uh, values even. So I, I used a second multiplier for my short order setting. And you see uh, the distance is now 1,000 times ATR. Formally, that means uh, a short order is not triggered any time. So uh, simply no short orders within that kind of strategy. Now it's a long only strategy. Only We would only place the long orders and uh, nothing else. And now it's a little bit better. We, we have one limitation less now. 
because if we go for quite small values of ATR multiplier, um, normally we would not know which order is opened first, the long or the short. Since we don't have a short order, it's always long. Um, and therefore, uh, the Excel sheet it is now a little bit more correct uh, than before. And we have the opportunity to go for smaller distances uh, without that kind of uh, limitation, limitation or restriction here. So it works. And you see, we, we get a quite easy strategy with a couple of trades. It's really thousands uh, of trades on a D1 base. It would be placing one, um, one order at the open of a candle. That's all. And um, in this case, I use the DAX Xetra values, which means I use the DAX values which open at nine o'clock German time. So it's a really nice strategy. Just looking for the open, then placing my buy stop order on the base of that open value. I use a quite small stop loss distance as well, a higher risk reward ratio, and that's all. If the order is triggered, good. Maybe I will hit my stop loss later or I wait for my take profit. If a trade is running, I would not place another order the next day. The next day. So whenever we have a triggered order on the next day, we don't um, place another order. So it's quite easy. And we get very good equities here. Um, maybe a little bit lower uh, risk reward ratios, but anyhow, it works quite perfect. And that you see, it's not always, uh, it's not uh, uh, something like uh, what, what works every time. If you, I go for completely other numbers like uh, other distances, you see I get much less orders because um, much less trades, so to say, uh, and the equity is not always uh, extremely well. Please don't forget, if you use those Excel sheets and you, you try other underlines, always go for the right spread value. <laughs> if, you use, if you would use this spreadsheet here and put in data for euro, US dollar, and you would still have a two for spread, you will see um, you don't have uh, any any good strategy because it will simply not work um, with that spread value for euro, US dollar. So don't forget to change uh, those values. But in this case, it's perfect to work with small distances for order entry for placing my by limit order, uh, by stop order, sorry. And then we have that kind of strategy um, here. And now it's a long only, which is okay for DAX. And we don't have that limitation that we uh, formally don't know which order has been triggered first on a D1 uh, base here. So don't forget about uh, the two limitations or uh, restrictions I had I have mentioned um, during the development of, of those kind of Excel sheets. But that's price action strategy. Whenever a huge movement is coming, we gain exactly from that move. That's all. That's the way, um, that's the logic behind that strategy. It's a little bit like a dynamical range breakout. You might use other titles or other namings for that kind of strategy, but it's if a huge action is coming, we will participate. We will gain exactly from that action. That's all. So, whoops, um, that's what we are doing here price action strategy and um, yeah in a nutshell price action can be traded well by placing those orders before and we place those orders on the base of an open of a candle uh, 
and we use an ATR for the base um, volatility. And um, we use then finally just a multiple of that ATR in order to place our buy stop and sell stop order. And what I have shown here is just for examples for, for underlyings like Euro, US dollar, Euro, Japanese yen, DAX, and gold. Um, yeah, and if you like, um, you can have those uh, Excel sheets. You can feed them with un other underlyings if you like and find good parameters. Just send me an email if you found something. And um, yeah, I will um, collect all those information and uh, share within the next webinar. Uh, we definitely will have in uh, December. So, but anyhow, it's a nice strategy for our toolbox. Toolbox is getting bigger and bigger for our different kind of strategies. And I personally hope that you enjoy those kind of informations like this uh, webinar. And see you again. Uh, soon, it's in about two weeks, just uh, have a look on the JFD event page and you will see latest, the 1st of December, um, the announcement for the next upcoming uh, webinars. See you. And if you want to have those Excel sheets, just send me an email to s.friedrichowski at jfdbrokers.com. And of course, have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Ciao.